Hello, everyone, um, wherever you are. Um, thank you very much for joining us today. Um, my name is um, Naoko. Oh, Evandro. Hi. Um, and my name is Naoko Mabon. I'm a curator based in Oban, um, which is a small town located on the west coast of Scotland. Um, in case you don't know where is Oban. I'm facilitating, fa facilitating today's event, which is the, the third of the conversation series of the Eco Creative Cluster project um, we just mentioned. Um, Eco Creative Cluster is a project focusing on nature based materials and dyeing techniques led by the um, Rockfield Center which is a newly refurbished cultural and heritage hub located in the heart of Auburn. It's part of Chart uh, Placemakers Microcluster Networks program in partnership with the Innovation School at School, um, Glasgow School of Art, funded by Creative Scotland. The project involves developing a community dye garden with a urban based textile artist, Deborah Gray, who is also um, here today, and local volunteers um, in the ground of the Lockfield Centre. The produce of the, the dye garden will be used in uh, workshops and artworks using uh, techniques such as natural dyeing, eco printing, and shibori. In parallel, to this dye garden development with myself. The project also aims to weave a, a wider network of practitioners working across different localities in the world with a sustainable and ecological approach. So this virtual conversation is a, a part of this network weaving strand and the, the third practitioner we meet is Fernanda Mascarenhas who is joining us um, today from Sao Paulo in Brazil. So thank you so much, um, Fernanda, for uh, joining us today. So Fernanda is a natural dyer and textile artist based in Sao Paulo, Brazil. In 2016, she started to research into natural dyeing to develop a costume for her performance work. This costume won a prize which enabled her to travel to Japan to learn more about traditional ways of natural dyeing and weaving. So large inspiration comes from Japanese culture actually, but locally grown Brazilian plants are the main material and passion for Fernanda. While engaging uh, with slow process of natural dyeing, in the area and time of urban Sao Paulo. Uh, she respects the, the generosity of nature, its cycle and changes, while intending to reclaim the, the lost knowledge of plants, such as their medical use. So I will pass over to Fernanda here so that she can talk more about her practice. And as Fee mentioned, um, after Fernanda's presentation, I will have a just kind of short um, interview with her, which will be followed by a Q&A session with the, the audience members. So um, yeah, feel free to um, think about what to, uh, what you want to ask and uh, pop in the um, chat section so that we can follow up later on. And so yeah, otherwise uh, please sit back and then enjoy the, the event. So um, thank you so much. And, and now over to you, Fernanda. Thank you so much. Okay. Good evening. Uh, good, good evening. Boa tarde, everybody, todo mundo. <laughs> First of all, thank you very much, Naoko-san, for inviting me to this event, Eco Cluster Conversation, Eco, Eco Creative Cluster. And thank you, Fee and Hockfield Center staff for this so kind welcome. I'm seeing many familiar and beloved faces here. Inês, Mario, Ana Lidia, thank you for being here with me. Thank you so much. I'm glad and honored to be here with you to chat about the colors of nature. 
for me, it's a blessing to carry on our work in the middle of such a difficult situation we are all still living these days. I'm a little bit nervous. <laughs> it's my first presentation in English. I'm not used to speaking English. I'm trembling <laughs> a little bit, but uh, I will try. <laughs> so let's start. I'm Fernanda and I was born in Sao Paulo and I have lived here all my life. Let me share with you my screen. Okay, this is the view I can see from my window. It's quite different from Deborah and Monica views, isn't it? Sao Paulo is a huge city. We are 12 people million living here. But beyond all these buildings, you, we can see in this picture, we look carefully Just a moment, please. We feel, look carefully, uh, we can feel and see nature. It was using plants that I picked up on these streets that I made my first textile work. This is Cada Passo. In English is each step. It's not only a textile work. When I say feel the nature, I'm not referring only about outside nature, but I'm talking about our first and strongest nature contact, our bodies. Maybe it is what I want to show with my work. Actually, this work was created by me first as a performance. This is each step performance. It was the result of 10 years of working and researching as a dance performer. This happened with a group of artists led by Toshi Tanaka, a Japanese artist based in Sao Paulo. During these 10 years, I immersed myself into the Japanese culture through my body. I have studied deeply the katas, this picture shows a kata related to thank you. Katas are basic body postures that you can find in many areas of Japanese culture, such as no theater, tea ceremony, Zen Buddhist practices, and martial arts. During the creation of each steps performance, I've realized the great value of craft art for the Japanese culture. It doesn't matter what kind of art is, ceramic or weaving or natural dyeing. All of them, without exception, have the body as a starting point. From this point of view, I've read the idea to make my costume using natural dyeing. I have decided to stitch this wool with natural dyed fabric scraps. So, that is the beginning of my way into the natural dyeing world. There isn't much information about natural dyeing in Portuguese, so it was a hard job to research on the internet and in books written in English. One day, I discovered eco printing, and I completely fell in love with eco printing. As I told you before, in order to make this rope, I've used plants that I picked up on the streets and gardens, like this guava tree leaf that appears in this picture. The, gu the guava tree is a native plant from Brazil. We can find these trees growing if the cracks in the curb, just like the picture shows. In the old days, this plant was used as tanning source to mordant the cotton fibers, probably as the same way you use oak gall or sumac in Scotland. In this picture, we can see the guava again, together with pomegranate, mango, and eucalyptus leaves, among other trees. 
I think you may how I think you may know pomegranate and eucalyptus. These plants are not native from Brazil, but you can find many of them in São Paulo streets. With this picture, I try to show what enchanted me so much about eco printing and continues to enchant me until now. We can use a few quantities of plants to obtain a, grand, a, a great effect. For instance, these flamboyant red flowers I picked up on a sidewalk. I think I used on this silk only four or five flowers and some other plants. You may see the result. Look at these colors and shapes. I think it's amazing. And everyone can do this. It's a democratic way of dying with plants. Back to my story, I have met Hisako Kawakami, also a Japanese textile, textile arts based in Sao Paulo. Here she. <laughs> with her, I've learned the basic natural dyeing technique that has been used in Japan, but using the plants we can find here in Brazil. The Kusakizome technique, which means dyeing with plants, has the same principle as all dyeing techniques around the world, to simmer the plant in water to extract the pigment from it. I've begun to learn a little bit more about Brazilian dye plants and their colors. For instance, this orange comes from Urucum. This, Urucum. If I'm not mistaken, in English is anato. You use the seeds. Urucum is used in Brazilian cuisine to color the dishes. The indigenous people also use it to paint their bodies for ritualistic ceremonies. This yellow comes from Marcella. Marcella is a scented plant a little bit similar to chamomile. It is a medicinal plant very common in the south of Brazil. I didn't found a name in English for this plant. This color comes from Araucaria. In English, it is Brazilian pine. This tree is a kind of pine native from the south and southeast of Brazil. I have written an article about Marcela and Araucaria that you can see on my blog. Blue is extracted from, from Anileira. This plant is one of the indigo species that we can find in Brazil. I made this dyeing on silk without the fermentation process. These are few examples of dye plants that you can use here in Brazil. There are many more. Since my first experience, I've never stopped dyeing and natural dyeing became my main activity. I began to sell natural dyeing scarves like that. <laughs> and no nowadays I have an online shop. I also have a blog to share my experience. In this picture, uh, you can see uh, one of the posts uh, that I already translated into English. Now, let me show you a little bit more about my textile work. This is Hagoromo. It means robe of feathers in Japanese, if I'm not mistaken, Naoko-san. The inspiration for this work come from my brief experience and studies about no theater. Hagoromo is a known play that composes the immense rep repertory of no theater. The no theater is a super traditional Japanese theatrical form, and I think I can say ritualistic too. This work, called Mang, in English is Mangrove, was inspired by a vacation trip to Espírito Santo, 
one of the Brazilian states. There, I have met the artisans that make clay pots at the mangrove ma margins. Almost all plants I have used to dye this work were collected on this trip. Mostly are the mangrove tree leaves as you see on the screen. The barks of mangrove trees are rich in tanning and are used by the artisans to, to paint their clay pot, pots black. It is an ancient technique that came from the indigenous people. Here you can see the artisan painting her hot clay pot with this tanning mixture. In my work, I don't search for ideal color or hue to express myself. My way is quite the opposite. Plants offer to me their colors. Then I use these colors to compose my work. I try to recollect feelings about the place that the plants came from. When I stitch the scraps of fabric to compose the whole work, it seems that I can breathe that unique instant, that unique place. This work is called Fall in Japan. It is the result of an amazing trip to Japan. I've won the first prize when Naoko-san told us in a craft art exhibition in Sao Paulo that has allowed my husband, husband and me to travel to Japan. There, we knew the work of two Japanese artists that devoted their lives to natural dyeing. Among so many experiences I have lived in this incredible trip, I brought deeply with me two things, the Japanese respect for nature and the importance of craft art te techniques for their cu culture. Of course, I have also brought plants that I've collected at the different places I've passed by. These plants were transformed in this work. I made it to express my gratitude for this wonderful opportunity. This is my most recent pro project called Impressões do Rio Verde. In English, is Green River Impressions. It is a collaboration with my husband, Gil Gosch, who also is a photographer. By the way, he is sitting beside me to help me if I don't understand any question. Perhaps, this is the work that best reveals the down. hidden Things name. Very wet, darling. Go and lie down. Thank you. Good girl. Perhaps this is the work that best reveals the reading nature in Sao Paulo City. Let me explain a little bit of it. Everything has begun with our discover that there are more than 300 underground rivers in Sao Paulo. In some streets, we can see spring water flowing on the curb, like, like in this picture. These rivers have been piped to allow the city's growth. Sao Paulo is, settled, is, is settled in the in the area of Atlantic Forest. Through the work of a non-governmental project called Cidade Azul, in English, Blue City, that studies these underground rivers, we can we have discovered the path of one of them, the Rio Verde, or Green River. In the map, we can see the, pa the Paths River. During one year, I've collected plants along the river's path. Maybe one day it was its bank, bank rivers. And Gil has taken pictures along the way. We cannot see the river because most of the time it flows invisibly under the streets, but you can feel that the plants 
have grown because the river is there. Here we can see the in, in, imprisoned river. In this picture, we can see one of the streets where the river flows underground. We have had the idea to, cre to create four different textile panels, which one for each season, winter, spring, summer, and fall. I've already dyed the scraps of fabric for all seasons, and I have stitched the summer panel. Uh, the winter one, and the spring is done too. I'm about to start the fall panel. With this image, I'd like to finish my presentation. I hope I have been able to share with you the meaning of natural dying for me. Like in the metaphor that we try to cre create with, with Grand River impressions, for me, natural dying is the way to reveal the nature around us. This fantastic nature that pulls hidden most of the time, suffocated by our modern way of life. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. Thank you so much. That's beautiful. Well, that's so, um, thank you so much, Fernanda. That's uh, beautifully um, gathered. Um, presentation. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> and very um, inspirational as well. I took some memos, but yeah, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, so this time probably people can use, um, compose the um, questions and comments, but while people doing that, I'll just ask a few questions and then do the, the interview with Fernanda. But yeah, that's wonderful. Thank you so much. Um, mm -hmm. Your practice is, well, first question, I have three questions. And first question is about sustainability. Mm -hmm. It's, um, I'm asking all the, the practitioners uh, we meet, but uh, your practice is so grounded in Sao Paulo um, this urban area and then your hometown, but it's been very much inspired by totally different culture, specifically Japanese culture, like, um, yeah, the bodily um, culture as well, I think. But uh, also your natural dyer and textile artist, but also performer and graphic designer as well. I think that you are um, taking in these differences and um, these differences are crossing over and supporting each other. Um, this situation might be one way to think about sustainability, um, I thought, or maybe just only me thinking like that. But um, can you tell us a little bit about your view or challenge on sustainability? Yes, I had never thought about it, but I think the different areas and cultures I travel to uh, have brought me a way of living sustainably. Uh, but it was natural dyeing, especially eco-printing, that brought me the, this idea more clearly. Um, uh, usually I use plants that in Portuguese are called erva daninha, in English, I think it is invasive plants. Um, yes, these plants grow on sidewalks and we be and will be cut and thrown away. Uh, I use these plants to color fabrics. I think this is a way of su sustainability. Um, another thing, find and using fabric that has been produced properly is also a challenge. Uh, Brazil is rich in natural source, but most of the time, our best quality pro products are too expensive to us, and then they, they are sold to the international market. In my artistic work, I can use scraps of fabrics that have been disposed by the fashion industry. 
uh, I find them at Banco de Tecidos, a shop where people exchange, exchange uh, fabric that has not uh, uh, been used. Before the pandemics, I used to I used to look for pieces of cloth at thrifty stores too. So I think it's a way to work sustainably, sustainably, <laughs> sustainably. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> ah, no, that's interesting. No, that's so inspiring. Um, <laughs> It's interesting that you're um, not focusing, but the, you're interested in using invasive plants. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. but uh, it's it's grow uh, in the sidewalk, in the crack on the curb, in the sidewalk, and then it's throw away, cut and throw away these plants. Uh, there are many medicinal plants like picão preto, uh, many, many, many kind of. Uh, uh, Quebra pedra, it's, uh, uh, it's good to the kidnap, kidnap, kidnaps, kidnaps, the, the kidnaps, uh, many, many plants. <laughs> uh, so that, yeah, that, that's very interesting. Um, so the, for some people, it might be totally enemy or invasive plants, but for some people, or if we use see it in, from the different angle, maybe you can realize that the different value or um, mm -hmm. something. No, that's really timely. I'm uh, working on, um, it's an idea stage, but uh, I think Haruka-san is here. She, um, she's a horticultural um, specialist and she, uh, we are looking at uh, Japanese, wheat, not wheat? Wheat, yes. Japanese not wheat, it's, it's a, such an invasive plant. Um, in this country, <coughs> it's very, very strong. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, we are looking at that, uh, how that, well, came to this country in the first place and then um, why this is, um, yeah, it, it's, it became so invasive. I mean, that uh, um, demonized. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, um, how I just a few, a few questions. Hi. Yeah, it's really interesting. It's really timely. Yeah, it's but, timely. I was thinking that. But it's the same idea I have. So, <laughs> yeah, so I'm, for example, I'm, as uh, Naoko san um, explains, Japanese not weed is kind of our, you know, like, um, motif, but that is also used for medicine and also mm -hmm. food and also dying material, dying plants, natural dying plants. So, yeah. It's timely, yeah. wasn't it, Haruka-san? I was hey? surprised. Timely. So timely. timely, really timely, yeah. Great. Right? That's interesting, yeah. Mm -hmm. how, how you use the disposed um, material from the, the wine industry, that's also very, very interesting. So, mm -hmm. Rifi, um, I cut... Um, I was just pointing out in the chat conversation, Laura made a nice comment where she said, a weed is only a weed if you can't find a use for it. <laughs> Which is nice. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Yeah. And she's also asked another question, so I wonder if I might jump in with her right, question absolutely. if it doesn't oh. get lost. And then, so she has asked, do the plants vary very much in, in different areas of Brazil of a lots of different plants? And if so, when the, res the pandemic restrictions allow, would you like to travel across the country to make different prints to reflect the entire country? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> you just love São Paulo. Uh, yes, but uh, here, uh... Uh, Brazil is, is, is so big. Uh, in here, there are, in English, it's, I don't know the word, there are 60 biomas, uh, uh, 60 Bi biomes, 60 kind of visit, vegetation, uh, the flora, etc. Et and here in Sao Paulo, uh, it, it's only one. There is a Cerrado in the center of Brazil. There is uh, Amazon forest. 
it's totally different, totally different plants we can see uh, in, in, in Amazon forest. Mm -hmm. And here there are Atlantic fo forest. Only in At Atlantic forest, we can, we, we, we have, if I'm, I'm not mistaken, 4,300, 4,300, 43,000. 43,000. species of flora, including all, all kinds of flora, uh, fungs, uh, 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 etc. Then oh, it's, it's many plants, many plants. Because uh, that's why uh, when, I, when I go to my sidewalk, I can see these growing plants in, in, in the sidewalk or gardens or... Yeah, uh, then I, I, I don't need travel to the, to the other <laughs> place to, to find the plants. <laughs> you have plenty already. Mm. Yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> and yeah. then we have a question from Deborah Gray, who has said um, she would be interested to hear a bit more about your process of dyeing with indigo. And she thinks you mentioned that you'd said non-fermented, which is different yeah. from her process. So she was she was asking about that. Yes. I don't have uh, much experience with indigo because I have uh, a um, little space here in my apartment. And for the fermentation process, we have so many plants, so uh, 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 a great quantity of plants to do the fermentation. And th that color I show, I showed uh, to you, I. I plant in a vase in my apartment and I uh, take the, the leaves and uh, mixing in the mixer and dye silk. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> That's it. I do what I can do. <laughs> Excellent approach. <laughs> Deborah, do you have comments? Or yeah, thank you very much, Fernanda. So that sounds like just a really direct way of, of doing it. And I, I absolutely hear what you say about you need a lot of plants for the usual methods with indigo. You need mm -hmm. a lot of plants, you need quite a lot of space, and it sometimes doesn't smell very mm -hmm. nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you don't really want to be doing it inside your apartment. Yes. If you can, if you can help it. Yes. So, yeah, that, that was, that's really interesting. And I love the way that, that you express that your work, through your work, mm -hmm. you're connecting with the places where you collect the plants that you use. And that's very much a theme in a lot of my own work as well, about mm -hmm. sort of bringing it back to, to place. So that was really interesting. A fabulous okay. presentation, very much. Ah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I thought that the days are lesser because uh, Deborah is inspired by um, Icelandic. Mm -hmm. um, patterns or textile culture, while um, you, Fernanda, you're inspired by Japanese techniques yes. or um, traditional um, dye, um, yeah, materials and yeah, the manners and yeah, that's very really interesting. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> um, the the next question I have, sorry, if um, yeah, absolutely, if I can. <laughs> carry on. Uh, next question I have is about ecology. So the, uh, when we had a chat, when, well, when I had a chat with um, Fernanda before this event, I asked Fernanda, how, how did you shift from performance to, to natural dyeing? Because she said that um, she was a performer before. Um, and then, well, still now, but um, more into performance. And then it must be quite different, I said. And then she, um, Fernanda said that, well, um, I see my body as a kind of nature. So other than approach or techniques, there's not actually not much difference to me um, how I use um, and navigate 
my body um, within kind of large circle of nature. And it was quite striking to me. And I thought that it might um, have some kind of uh, relationship to this question, I mean, the e ecology. So um, the, my next question is that, uh, can you tell us a little bit about um, this idea of um, ecology? Yes, it's very beautiful, Nokosan, thank you. <laughs> I think you have already answered. <laughs> oh. I, I, I have always found that any discussion of ecology begins with our own bodies. Our body is a perfect as example of ecology. In it, many living organisms co 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 coexist in mutual collaboration. And there are many relationships. And these relationships get bigger and bigger until they hit the environment and the whole planet. There was a professor named Pierre Rivaio who used to speak about many ecologies, broadening the meaning of the term. In his work, in his work he speaks of ecology of being, a social ecology, and finally an environment ecology. I find this point of view very interesting and I agree with it. No, that's really interesting. Um, I really like that uh, how you said about that, uh, that our body is collaborating with the, the nature or outside world. I, yeah, that's uh, interesting. That, that uh, relates to the point that you made um, in the presentation, you said that uh, rather than in the, your creative practice, rather than you creating your own ideals, it's like uh, almost like nature um, is approaching you almost like uh, mm -hmm. with the color. So it's uh, almost like they have um, they have the verb, if you know what I mean, like you. Yes. Not that you are the, the person doing something. Well, you are doing something, I, I guess, collaborating. But yes. um, the nature or animals or living beings outside, they have their own doing. That's, that's I think, uh, quite um, inspiring, I thought. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much. That's great. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> so, um, the last question I have is uh, that's a growing net wider network thing. So weaving the network is one of the main aims of our project. And mm -hmm. to grow this uh, natural dying network further, if you could give us one name um, or uh, of a um, practitioner or group is fine, um, you already have a connection and then um, who uses similar techniques or materials? Yes, with pleasure. Actually, I'd like to give two names. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> First is Hisako Kawakami, my dear teacher. See, she is a textile artist and a natural dyer. She uses batik, embroidery, and colors of the plants in her senses sensitive work. Uh, Hisako Kawakami. Hisako Kawakami. So he, um, she is based in Sao Paulo. In Sao Paulo. The other is Nara Gishon. Uh, I don't know if uh, she is here, uh, but uh, she she also is a textile art and an um, environmentalist. Uh, she makes wonderful work with disposal fishing net uh, that she finds in the seashore. It's an interesting uh, work, very interesting work. Uh, she's from uh, Florianópolis in Santa Catarina. Florianópolis uh, is the uh, other city in the south in the south of Brazil. Uh, the name uh, Nara Guichon. That's in the chat. <laughs> yeah, do you put the uh, name? Thank you. That's uh -huh. 
these two artists. <laughs> So uh, again, the, um, the second artist, Nara um, Gushion, she, um, this person uses the discarded or almost like a rubbish. Uh, this is the, the fisherman uses the, the net to fish the, 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 to fish in, in the sea. Oh, right. And that, uh, yes, and this net is disposes at the sea. Then, uh, these nets come back in at the seashore, and uh, she collects this 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 net. And um, I don't know the the uh, 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 not I I, I forgot knit knit in another yes knit in, in another way uh, with uh, uh, these uh, with clothes and and more mm -hmm. more <laughs> oh wonderful it's a uh, wonderful it's wonderful yeah seems like both have a in instagram account so I'll, I'll check out later yes in instagram it's it's, it's in instagram on instagram <laughs> great um, I wonder that's um, I those are the, the um, questions I prepared and then I wonder if anyone has questions. We or... do have one from Susan. Okay. So Susan has typed in the chat. She said, "Are you conscious of plants' sentience, just as a complementary consciousness to our own?" Mm. If I if I understand good. Yes, I, I think it's plant is a, a being sentient, a sentient being, yes, like the animals, like us, and like the mineral world too, I think. <laughs> I, that reminds me of, um, that's not me saw the article, but I have a, I remember that once I saw the article on the Facebook someone shared, the article was saying that apparently the, the researcher discovered that the, the, the plant feels the pain. So if we kind of take out the pain, the, the plants, apparently the, the plants feel the pain. <laughs> yes, I, I think so. I, I, I get, I, eu peço, eu peço licença. I, I ask to permission to take, take off the plants of mm. the words. <laughs> Ah, I see. Um, I can see Susan's nodding away. Susan, you're welcome to unmute and, and join in if you wish, but I, do, I can see that she is nodding, so I believe she's very, she's happy with the answers. <laughs> <laughs> Good. <laughs> yeah, if you, anyone has uh, questions or comments, feel free to unmute and then... Um, Oh yes, somebody said, have a look at the Fintorn Foundation's approach to plants. Mm -hmm. There we go, that's from Gillian. Mm -hmm. So if anyone else does have a question, do feel free to um, unmute and ask <laughs> away because we've got a gap. Or if you don't wish to talk, you can, you can type it and I can read it out as well. Um, as we've got a little bit of time left, um, if there's any other questions. It's uh, while waiting. It's not a question, but uh, I found that very interesting about uh, you went to, well, you used the, the material from mangrove because mm -hmm. mangrove is another, if I understand correctly, correct me, correct to me, anyone who knows better, but um, that they, um, they are facing the danger. I mean, that's one big, very important um, thing to for, for the, the climate change crisis. Mm -hmm. But it's kind of, did you, um, the, the amount of mangrove is like, yeah, rainforest. There is a, because of the human act, I think um, there is a danger for that. So I thought that uh, you used the material from the mangrove for your work and then that's, you know, like almost like uh, you are um, um, making their voice visible, their stories visible. <laughs> you know, if I, 
if I achieve the, this, uh, it's it's amazing <laughs> for me. It's amazing because uh, it's 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 uh, it's a problem uh, uh, to mangrove. Uh, I think I don't know. Uh, the, uh, I don't know deeply what are what is the problem, but I think it's the pollution of the sea. I think because the mangrove is a uh, sensitive. I don't know if I can say no. sensitive for things, but it's a sensitive ecosystem. Mm. Then the pollution of the sea. Uh, it's. And it's a, a so important ecosystem mm. to all, all, all around the, the world. But mm. in Brazil, there are there are in, in all the the, the shore uh, mangroves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I do have a question just in here from Tam, who asks, "What do you use as a mordant in eco printing?" I use uh, alum. That, that's the, the more. Decoada, I don't know in English this name. It's a kind of uh, ash water. Ash uh, make from uh, water make from ash. And uh, uh, ion acetate. Ion acetate. These three these three uh, mordants, like the other, the other natural dyeing uh, things. I think we would use um, soda, washing soda, instead of so ash water. The same ah, thing, it's an okay. alkali. Uh-huh, yes, yes. Yeah, so it's not, it's not so much, on, but it's a mordant, but it, it modifies the acidity. Yes. Uh, um, uh, ancient uh, here in Brazil, uh, 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 that that kind of of uh, mordant is used is used uh, uh, as mordant because it's so easy to do. I do this in, in, in here in my house uh, uh, from ashes. Perfect. Tam is nodding as well. I like I like the nods that mean they like the answers. <laughs> Even if everyone's quiet, I see the happy nods. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, I would like to say thank you for the Rockfield Centre, just while we've got a little gap in case anyone does want to ask any other questions. But it's been fascinating as I have no experience in dyeing or dye plants, but it's just been lovely to hear you did incredible in a second language i could not do it in a first language so really really <laughs> inspirational and fascinating and i'm going to be walking the streets looking all the weeds in oban taking the weed <laughs> and squashing them <laughs> i might need to ask a bit more advice from people on what i do next but yeah so thank you very much uh, for the rockfield center thank you very much you uh, i'm so glad to be here I'm so glad. <laughs> Thank you. Lovely. We've had people from all over the world and I can see the comments in the in the chat just now. Everyone's equally as thrilled and they're they're loving how connected we all are and how connected um, you've shown a, a link to to where you live as well as to the plants around you, which is lovely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Jessica, thank you so much for your comment. It, it, you can um, Say that if you if you if you like, unmute yourself and. Um, <laughs> I do, <laughs> for me this <laughs> um, uh, uh, Fernanda, that that was a, a wonderful talk. Uh, thank you very much. Um, it, it just strongly resonates uh, with my work. Uh, you know, it's, it's all about being reconnected with nature, but we know because we we've, we've forgotten that, and uh, we are part of the ecosystem. We are yeah. also natural beings, um, and, uh, and 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 if we can go back to that awareness that we are part of that ecosystem, and that we have, and I think we naturally would go back to a, a way of being and doing that is more in harmony with nature and with our planet and other other living creatures, mm -hmm. and it, it was really inspiring and enriching. And um, thank you, that was really great. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> well, thank you. That was so nice. Uh, and I'm sorry, one, one more question. I'm interested in, in understanding what was happening with the mangroves um, in Brazil. 
um, and uh, with with the because uh, I wasn't sure I understood uh, your your comments about the the the, the with the barks and uh, the because they're being used the teacher is being used but are they are there diseased mangroves that are being used or what was the oh is that my comment is yes um, um I saw that. Uh, um, Fernanda said that uh, she visited mangrove and then she uh, used the, the material from the mangrove and then yes. made the eco print work. Yes. So I yes, thought that uh, I know I don't know lots about um, this thing, but uh, mangrove I understand that it's in danger. Uh, even though it's very important thing to prevent um, carbon emissions, not carbon emissions, sorry, the, the yes, climate, it, climate the, crisis. They sequester carbon and protect from storms. Yeah, but yeah. Mm -hmm. What was the comment about that the, they're, they're, being, um, they're being delicate or there was an issue with the mangroves uh, there or maybe I misunderstood, sorry. No, uh, mm -hmm. I said that because that's in danger. Ah, yes, okay, okay. Um, and then he, she used the, the material from there um, and then made the artwork. So I, I, I just thought that that is a kind of... Um, uh, Fernanda made the, the mangrove's voice or stories kind of visible. Mm -hmm. Yes, and uh, for the art songs too because uh, the work of these artisans are in danger too. Because there, there isn't mangrove, the artisans disappear too. <laughs> mm -hmm. They are the mangrove. Do, do, you, do you understand? The, the, and and uh, they, keep, they, they, they keep their tradition, their indigenous tradition live now. And <laughs> I we have to protect happens. both the traditions and the mangroves so that both can continue. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. And uh, if we analyze the, the whole coast of Brazil, is suffering from pollution and from sometimes uh, big companies that are building. Uh, resorts, uh, resorts and, and hotels, hotels near to the coast, coast and on and beaches. beaches. And so, so in, in some, some places, places the mangrove, mangrove is uh, being destroyed. destroyed. So, so this idea, idea that, that Fernanda has, has of protecting, protecting these, uh, these, these natural, natural, resorts, natural resorts, these ancient, ancient resorts, resorts, is very strong. strong. And, and uh, uh, there in Spirit Santo, we, we see, see that, that uh, that traditional, traditional way, way of, of making, making the pots is uh, losing uh, space, space because, because of uh, of, of this uh, damage to the mangrove. Mm. Or less mm. is what uh, is happening here. Thank you, Jill. Thank you. Yeah, that was interesting. <laughs> Great. Any more comments or? <laughs> Questions. We've done a very good, very neat hour. This is a very I know. perfect presentation. <laughs> I don't know. I want to perfect. <laughs> <laughs> this is wonderful. So if you if anybody wishes to jump in with any last question, if not, you've they've done all wonderfully. So I'll <laughs> give everyone 30 seconds, last chances, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like a textbook presentation. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah. Um yeah, I, I can see just two minutes away. So well, on behalf of all the, the Eco Creative Cluster team, I would love to thank Fernanda once again uh, for okay. sharing her, um your practice today and uh Fee for your brilliant support as always and everyone for coming along and tuning in today so thank you so much everyone really i really enjoyed that myself uh, so and if you you know forgot to ask questions or you forgot to to put a comment or anything then they email us i mean through the 
um, a Rockfield Center or Rockfield Center's um, social media channels, that's great. We'd love to hear that. And next conversation is a uh, uh, month time. At the moment, it's Saturday morning of 29th of May with uh, Nanako Suzuki. She's a, a designer based in Japan. Uh, who did an amazing community um, engaged uh, project uh, creating different textiles with uh, community members. So uh, the, 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 we will have an event with her uh, in month's time. So please keep your eyes um, open <laughs> to, um, to, uh, for any kind of update from the Rockfield Center's website or social media channels. And if you feel like your practice, what you're doing is really relating to our project, then uh, we'd love to hear about the story. So um, please share using maybe hashtag, like Eco Creative Cluster hashtag. Um, yeah, that's great. So that's Oh my God, that's eight o'clock, like precisely. <laughs> so thank you very much, everyone. Um, yeah, thank you for joining us today and I'll see you hopefully soon. Bye.